video, I wanted to go ahead and clarify a video that I have linked in the description below. It really caused a lot of controversy, but I think one thing I may have failed to convey, uh, or maybe it's uh, it's just uh, maybe it's a misinterpretation because people may not have been watching the video. I haven't sat there and watched my uh, video yet, but I, I wanted to go ahead and give a little bit of clarification because when it comes to uh, long range reconnaissance patrols, I think I uh, the the problem is I don't have the gear for the proper you know reconnaissance patrol based on the characteristics I'm going to go ahead and talk about. And yes, this is from experience uh, stuff that I would prefer, but I had to give some kind of representation or illustration in order to better uh, give the information to my audience and uh, give them a picture of what I'm talking about. So I apologize for that, but uh, at the same time. There are other supporting videos that talk about um, the ways I would uh, basically modify certain things, such as the MREs, in order to be more, mm, you know, realistic as far as like packing light and the amount of food you'll actually eat and how you'd pack it on your person. So definitely check out my channel if you want that clarification, but <clears throat> I apologize if there's some misconception and you feel like there's misinformation. So uh, this is my chance to kind of rectify that and my attempt to. So go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know what you think if I actually did an okay job. But also put in your own comments if you have some ideas that would you feel would be uh, based off your experiences uh, being more helpful. So really my my hope was to kind of display the militia sort of centric uh, it's more centric to militia operations, not necessarily uh, kind of crossing over my military experience to how a militia would probably uh, want to work on a long range reconnaissance patrol based on you know what is available or whatever. Uh, however, um, first things first is uh, camouflage clothing. That's important to have camouflage clothing. I mean, um, minimalistic uh, camouflage, you don't need to go with military issue necessarily, but there are some things that you might want to consider, and I've made uh, uniform suggestions in the past, like twill um, for, you know, uh, snagging and stuff like that, long-term uh, durability, and um, basically it prevents rips and, you know, abrasion resistance. It does very well with that, but also getting a good camouflage pattern with that um, and also working with, uh, you know, constant movement, prevention of chafing and stuff like that. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that go into you know, just like selection of material is very important as well as uh, camouflage selection because material can make sure you, you're more durable. Uh, chafing prevention, uh, basically uh, pattern retention and stuff like that and also like IRR reflective uh, material. So uh, anyways... Uh, the next thing is gear. You want it light and minimalistic. So, um, uh, I want to go ahead and drop this these pictures on you. So, with those pictures, you'll see that uh, you have like uh, what's called belt kit from um, like British infantry really likes this stuff. Well, not maybe not really likes it, but prefers it, and it still works well for them. And then also you add my Alice interpretation of that. So it's really um, it, it's not necessarily minimalistic, but the the point is that if you have to ditch your pack, you actually have an ability to uh, continue to operate or uh, sustain yourself for a certain amount of time, and it is very efficient, and it is cost efficient too, and it's very comfortable, and it works well with body armor, and working under the body armor, so not necessarily putting stuff on top. You can keep your body armor on, and and you know you don't have to um, basically uh, take off your gear in order to um, basically take off your body armor and kind of take your your field bra off, as it were. Uh, but anyways, you want your gear light, and uh, those the belt kit that I have is actually pretty lightweight from the get-go and Alice gear is relatively light as well uh, and also gear distribution is a big thing in keeping it light so basically using your body's design and your body's layout in order to support that gear is going to have a big uh, impact on that as well as physical conditioning and being used to certain things like kneeling getting into the prone and uh, <clears throat> being able to slowly move around because if you're on a LERP you're constantly on the move right so you need to have the fitness level to uh, help with that anyways because you can't really tech and gear your way out of uh, the basic uh, human movements that you're going to have to have on a constantly moving uh, basis and I learned that the hard way uh, so anyways next thing is the pack 
from my experience that you want it to be kind of narrow and my representation isn't really the best uh, but um, maybe you're able to uh, find a good pack that actually will last you a long time or at least lay it out and also you're distribu uh, distributing the gear throughout the uh, patrol maybe you have somebody that's designated as I, I hate to say it but the mule uh, that's how we had it in the military it worked out pretty well and also rotating packs as well and uh, uh, kind of the role as far as the meal, um, helping each other out and having good teamwork is essential for that as well. And also, um, packing your stuff well. And what that means is uh, laying stuff out in order of priority. So obviously sleeping gear is going to be minimalistic at best. And, uh, you know, obviously you're going to be operating on shifts. So not everybody's going to necessarily need a poncho. That can actually be shared. And uh, depending on, on stuff in, you know, rain gear and stuff like that, you might just want to be someone who's okay with the rain, and I found that to actually be very beneficial. Uh, so anyways, um, and you are going to be moving a lot, so you might just want to get used to it. And also, that goes back to the clothing you have, so you want it to actually still provide Kim flush even when wet. So uh, that's, you, there's a lot to consider here. And so as far as packing, well, I did talk about having food on you because chow is a constant thing but also packing it in such a way that there's very little waste and also uh, packing stuff that is light to eat, you don't need a spoon. Don't pack anything that really needs a spoon. I mean, if you're gonna be doing halts like a temporary OP, uh, OP, LPOP or whatever, then <clears throat> you might want to uh, you know have something that you can chow on to help uh, support morale and stuff like that. But the, the priority is packing everything in order of uh, and in locations of uh, basically priority, you shouldn't have to get into a pack to take out binoculars or a monocular. I would recommend a monocular because it is low profile. It's going to be lighter and you only really need one eye. Uh, but anyways, if you need depth perception, get a rangefinder, right? Uh, so that can be light and, you know, a, spare, a pair of binoculars versus, you know, having a monocular and a rangefinder, you know, yada, yada. Uh, saving, saving weight uh, and you get two in one, right? But anyways, um, you want to make sure that everything pretty much is mission-centric and contingency-centric. So what that means is, like, mission essential gear, when you're on a, on alert, uh, you may stop a, uh, stop a bit. But you want to make sure that it's minimalistic and that you have things that are basically laid out for contingency. So you can, ha there's plenty of examples in the Vietnam War and even recently when there was long-range observation, like uh, the story of Lone Survivor, they were out there to observe. And obviously they had to pack light going in the mountains and stuff like that, but uh, most of their gear was basically around the mission and there were some things that were just heavy that isn't really realistic for a militia like computers and, you know, satellite stuff and satellite communications and stuff like that. It, everything's going to be a little bit different for a militia. Uh, but basically having things like cameras and um, basically... Um, Hasty operation gear, so you might want a certain amount of zoom, but that usually goes with uh, pre-mission planning, but everything should probably be at a distance. A distance is your friend, but also uh, the ability to kind of set up a hasty uh, OP is, uh, is a good deal as well. So a little bit of camouflage and stuff like that. Uh, smoke um, for basically covering your movement or distraction of when you are. Uh, trying to uh, confuse or whatever, you know, falling back, and you need ammo to stay in the fight. Uh, ammo, ammunition is time. So a lot of the times, uh, people would uh, on Vietnam alerts were prioritizing prioritizing ammo. But you gotta realize that prioritizing ammo in the Vietnam War was because the tactic at the time was to sweep the jungle with fire. It wasn't really fire discrimination necessarily. So you gotta keep that in mind that they needed enough to basically minigun the tree line. <clears throat> Uh, with their stuff because that was keeping heads down and hope you know spraying and praying uh, throughout the jungle uh, so based on the tactics at the time they needed a lot of that and also some examples with uh, like the lone survivor issue where you had to uh, four people going out, they had to change the tactics based on that uh, because of the lack of fire support and stuff like that um, Marcus Luttrell he had a Mark 12 which is a pretty common DM uh, rifle nowadays uh, at least uh, when I was in, even in 2009, 2010, when we were doing deployments uh, back back then, uh, Mark 12 was pretty widespread, but he left with, he said, 13 magazines, and he had one left after, you know, a six-hour engagement. Uh, so that can illustrate the, the need for some of this stuff in uh, uh, extra ammo in some cases, but <clears throat> also sharing that ammo did happen, so uh, just keep that in mind. 
uh, and you might want to beat feet more than uh, you know sitting uh, down and doing an engagement because their whole thing was uh, somewhat aggression rather than uh, falling back. Uh, but you know it depends on the situation, however you want to prepare. But uh, again, that might go down to uh, the meal. And the next thing is minimal food. I did, I had like 28 MREs, and that was uh, based on experience. When we were dropped into Marja, we actually uh, had one person who was a meal and one person who was just carrying a day, a day pack. And that's where my experience with sharing kind of uh, came into account. Because you do want minimal food, but you might actually want somebody that actually has enough uh, to last a whole day. You might want to actually have some extra, but that's not saying pack the whole damn MRE. All right, <clears throat> that, and that's not saying to to pack. That isn't to say that you need to pack a crap load of food and have the whole MRE with you. Of course, you're gonna feel strippy. You gotta carry it at the end of the day, and you gotta have room. But the idea is that that's the normal amount of chow somebody would expect. But depending on how long you're gonna be out, like the SAS is notorious for still today preparing their people for like a 28 day OP. And they got to be able to carry that food, or they just need to get used to, uh, you know, like a fasting routine. Like one day you actually eat, and another day you actually have a full day's meal. So you're actually able to cut your rations in half depending on what you're doing. And uh, they, in the Falklands, they actually had some OPs where they were basically living off powdered creamer. And so it was pretty horrible for them sometimes. So you got to keep that in mind that you might want to actually get used to the idea of fasting or because uh, constantly eating can actually cause you to lose weight a lot faster since fasting metabolically actually halts uh, weight loss and stuff like that. It's more weight preserving, I guess you could say, but you're working off body fat. So it's not a, not a bad idea to kind of go back to... Um, you know, working on fitness and stuff like that, and it's okay to have a little bit of extra, you know, muffin top. But anyways, um, that's pretty much a, a little overview of what I was talking about in that video, and, uh, you know, kind of talking about a long-range reconnaissance patrol. You could be expected to actually have to do surprise strikes just to disrupt the enemy in that case. So other things as well, like... <clears throat> defense stuff like trip wires and stuff like that early warning systems and stuff maybe even just set up the setting up like a trip wire on a trail just to make an enemy think that you're going to spring an ambush or they walk into a defensive system that can even be a disruption just a um, plain little decoys here and there just a mess with them uh, but yeah you could be carrying some of that some of that stuff too if you're uh, mission is that way and if you are operating in, in a militia these days it, there's not going to be that many people so you do need to adjust stuff and not treat yourself like you're uh, going to be uh, doing conventional warfare most of your stuff needs to be guerrilla centric and that might actually mean not really doing lurp so much uh, but uh, your long range reconnaissance patrol might actually be deep uh, deep penetration into uh, basically civilian type stuff like Taliban and Al Qaeda type tactics but anyways uh, that's just my my take on uh, on lurk gear and stuff like that uh, from my experience. So I hope that cleared some stuff up because I had some pretty nasty comments, but I'm not afraid to actually bite back. Uh, so, anyways, I'm not trying to make enemies here, but don't be an ass, and I won't I won't uh, reply. But uh, with all that said, I hope that answered uh, some of the things. I'm sorry, uh, going on talking a lot, but some of you guys probably noticed that, but I'm trying to share my information to kind of show you what I'm talking about and interpret that. So anyways, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you haven't seen the video I'm talking about, go ahead and see it and uh, and, and watch it all the way through. You know, actually commit to walk it, watching it all the way through um, because you might have, I actually realized that you were, a little, uh, a little bit, you know, premature in some of your nasty comments or whatever. But uh, with all that said, thanks a lot for watching, and you guys have a good one.